If you are married, as many of you are, uh, what did you expect from your wife? What did you expect from your husband? Here is what someone said is an ideal wife, what every man expects. She'll always be beautiful and cheerful. She could marry a movie star, but wants only you. She will have her, fair, her hair that never needs curlers or beauty shops. Her beauty won't run in a rainstorm. She will never be sick, just allergic to jewelry and expensive clothes and shoes. <laughs> she will insist that moving the furniture by herself is good for her figure. She will be an expert in cooking, cleaning house, fixing the car, painting the house. Her favorite hobbies will be mowing the lawn and working in the yard. She will hate credit cards. Her favorite expression will be, what can I do for you today? That's the ideal wife. This is what he expects. This is what he gets. She speaks 140 words a minute with gusts up to 180. Uh, she's a light eater. As soon as it gets light, she starts eating. <laughs> Where there's smoke, there she is cooking. She'll let you know you only have two faults, everything you say and everything you do. No matter what she does with it, her hair looks like an explosion in a steel wool factory. If you get lost, open your wallet, she'll find you. Here's the ideal husband, what every woman expects. He will be a brilliant conversationalist. He'll be very sensitive, kind, understanding, humorous, loving, and romantic. Sounds just like myself. Uh, <laughs> he will be a hardworking man, help around the house by cooking, not so much. Uh, washing dishes, vacuuming floors, taking care of the yard. He will be a handsome, tender man of emotional and physical strength. What she gets. He will always take her to the best restaurants. Someday he may take her inside. <laughs> Anytime he gets an idea in his head, he has the whole thing in a nutshell. Just think about it. Um, he's a well-known miracle worker. It's a miracle when he works. He supports his wife in the manner to which she was accustomed. He's letting her keep her job. He's such a bore that he bores you to death when he gives you a compliment. He has occasional flashes of silence that makes his conversation brilliant. Well, there you are. Some of you don't like that. You think it's very cynical. I think it's very funny. Please, no emails over it. This is only in jest. Um, for those of you who have no uh, humor, uh, I am so sorry. Um, <laughs> it's always the jokes and the illustrations that get the great emotion, which we felt so emotional of our doctrine, right? Well, the state of marriage in the, in the United States is not encouraged encouraging. Fewer people are getting married and are delaying getting married. And I read recently that 70% of divorces are initiated by women, one of the reasons some young men are hesitant to marry. Many couples, although they are not divorced, have very poor marriages. And that in spite of all of the books, seminars, videos, counsels, and experts on marriage. Never have we had such a barrage on how to have a good marriage. And so today, we look to the Word of God. We need biblical teaching, don't we, on marriage and relationships. Last week, I spoke to the wives as we looked at the first six verses of 1 Peter 3. We're going to look at one verse today, and it's found in 1 Peter 3, verse 7. So let's turn to our Bibles. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. 1 through 6, Peter has addressed wives and now husbands. Here it is. Likewise, husbands. Husbands, are you listening? Live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel, since they are heirs with you of the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered. Now, we know from Scripture that men and women are equal in personhood and dignity and in value, but the Bible clearly presents a distinction between men and women, 
And that distinction goes right back to the creation ordinance of Genesis 2 and is repeated throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament. We realize this is disputed today with transgenderism and so on, but we believe at Calvary in the continuing authority of the Bible as the Word of God. It is our pattern and our guide for all of life, in spite of what society may say. And without a firm foundation in our marriages, in our lives, in our relationships, we will flounder, and we will be open to the latest ideological or philosophical wind and fads which blow like a wind through our landscape. Peter is writing to believers, believers who are suffering, believers who are experiencing injustice. Some of them have been scattered, had to move from their homes and their families. And Peter, as he writes to them, as we've been learning, he encourages them, and this is difficult for us, he encourages them and us to live life with respect and with humility in all of their relationships and in their marriage. What about your marriage? In your marriage in the past, there may have been many difficulties, perhaps even some marital failure. Mistakes may have been made, harsh words spoken, bitter attitudes nursed in the past. Others of you uh, will face problems and crises in your marriage in these coming months. I ask you not to despair. You may feel your marriage is very bad. You may feel you're toiling, but I'm going to give you great encouragement from the Word of God. I'm going to say, if you do things God's way, God will honor you and glorify you. So we want to pay careful attention to the teaching of Scripture on this important subject of marriage and relationships. Now, these verses, uh, 1 Peter 3, verses 1 through 7, are not a complete discourse on marriage. That's not what Peter is saying. He's writing in a particular context, as we saw last week. But I want to say to all of us, particularly to the singles, who may be wondering if you'd get married or not, marriage is a wonderful gift from God. When I have the privilege of marrying couples here, I emphasize that marriage is God's idea. It's not our idea. It's not that we woke up and thought, well, this is a good way to organize our things. It's not because of legislation. It's not because of a decision of the Supreme Court. No, this is God's way that man and woman should come together in this holy covenant of marriage. And as a married man, I can say it's a wonderful gift from God. Not that everyone gets married. Some, as Paul would say in 1 Corinthians 7, some have the gift of celibacy, but most of us are going to get married. That does not mean that there are any perfect marriages. They're not. We are imperfect people. I remind couples who are about to get married that you are marrying an imperfect person. We are imperfect, they are imperfect. But here is wise guidance from the Scriptures. Now, last week we learned four principles which should characterize the Christian wife. First of all, Christian wives are to display submission to their own husbands. Verse 1, likewise, wives, be subject to your own husband. Secondly, wives are to display godly behavior even when their husband is an unbeliever. Again, end of verse 1, even if they don't listen to the Word, they may be won by a, the, by a word by the conduct of their wives when they see, here it is, your respectful and pure conduct. Christian wives are to display godly behavior. Thirdly, they are to display true beauty. What's true beauty according to Scripture? Verse 4, let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit. That, says Peter, is precious in the eyes of God. And then finally, as we saw in verses 5 through 6, Christian wives are to trust in God. Peter gives the example of Sarah, a woman who hoped in God, a, a woman who showed her respect for her husband in that particular culture. And Christian wives, similarly, are to trust in God, they're to respect their husbands, and they're not to live in fear. Sometimes women live in fear. Don't live in fear. Put your trust and your hope in God. Now, Peter does not tell the unbelieving wife 
to leave her unbelieving husband. God will give such a wife all of the help, all of the wisdom she needs to submit to God's purposes for her life and seek to live to God's glory. This is one of the wonderful things of being a Christian, that whatever your circumstances, whatever the state of your marriage, whatever the state of your life, whatever unforeseen and disappointing circumstances come into our lives, they're all under the sovereign hand of God. And if I trust God, and if I'm humble before God, God will give me all of the wisdom, all of the grace, all of the strength I need for that day. That while a Christian wife is to submit to her husband, she certainly must not do anything that is sinful or in any way disobedient to the Lord. However, a wife should certainly not stay in a marriage where there is continued abuse from her husband. And we're going to learn how we as husbands are to relate to our wives. <clears throat> Isn't it interesting that Peter, who is married, gives six verses to the wives and only one to the husband. <laughs> Paul, who may not have been married, gives more instruction to the husband. So we have for husbands, in a sense, we only have one verse. So we need to get this one verse right. What is he saying? Here it is. Treat your wives with sensitivity and honor. Christian husbands are to treat their wives with sensitivity in an understanding way, with consideration is the point. He begins verse seven by saying likewise, just as he did in verse one. Likewise, he's continuing the theme that we are to live in an attitude of respect and humility before everyone. And so he's connecting this to the previous teaching. He does not say that husbands are to be in subjection to their own wives, but this teaching is radical in that culture. Likewise, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way. Men, we are to be considerate to our wives. We are to love our wives as Christ loved the church, Paul says. That means that you are to put the needs of your wife before your own. Is that difficult for us men? Yeah, sometimes it's very difficult. We are generally speaking, self-centered. We can be very selfish as husbands, but I'm to love my wife and I am to live with her in an understanding, considerate, sensitive way. That's a very high calling, isn't it? Now, notice what Peter says. Husbands, live with your wives. Married men must not live like single men. Sadly, some couples, even Christian couples, don't actually live together. Sometimes they're in the same house, but they don't actually live together. Sometimes they are separated. They just live in different places. That's contrary to the Word of God. Basically, this is obvious, but I'm going to say it, husbands, live with your wives. Someone here separated from your wife? You say, well, she's a very difficult person to live with. That may be. You're to live with your wife. And in the same house, you're to live together. Not to live separate lives within the one house. That is not what Scripture would say. Now, I realize sometimes Christian husbands, Christian wives have to travel. Their employment circumstances may take them away from home. But a married Christian, whether husband or wife, will try to minimize his or her time away from home. I've known men who love to travel. And one of the reasons they love to travel, they want to escape the pressures of home. At home, there's yard work to be done. There's diapers to be changed. There's screaming children. There's a wife that they think is nagging them, and so they love to get out of town. I can understand that. But for the Christian husband, we should try to minimize the time we're away from our families, because being away from home Men, you know this if you travel in business, being away from home can lead to all kinds of temptations, can't it? I read just the other week that we now have what's called remote husbands. Remote husbands are, are men who work from home. 
men and women still specialize generally in different kinds of works, occupations. Jobs in industries such as computer science and engineering are disproportionately performed by men. Teaching and nursing are dominated by women. So this results now in more, this is find this intriguing, more men than women work from home. 50% of women report being unable to work remotely at all compared with 39% of men who are unable to work at home. Part of that is because of the difference in professions and occupations. So this creates a different dynamic in the home and increases the need for the husband, I would suggest, to be more sensitive. He's at home. His wife is working. She's got to travel. She's got more hassle out of the home. And she comes back home and she's tired. And how important it is, men, that we live with our wives in an understanding way, in your context, whatever that is, with consideration. Paul says you are to nourish and cherish your wife. That's a high calling, isn't it? That was revolutionary in the first century. It's revolutionary in this 21st century. Some husbands think if they provide for their family financially that they've discharged their responsibilities. No, live with your wife in an understanding way. Men, I ask you, in your hearts, are you doing that? Are you sensitive? Are you considerate to your wife? In the previous church, I was contacted by a couple of young men, sons, and uh, they explained that their parents were about to celebrate their 25th wedding anniversary. And they asked if I would uh, come and renew their vows, read some scripture and pray, and I said, yes, I'd be glad to do that. And so, good night, I go to the people's home. There was going to be the little service of the renewal of their vows. They'd invite a lot of friends, and then we we're going to go into the uh, house for, um, to, for the celebration for some food. And uh, <clears throat> we stood outside, there was a beautiful swimming pool. At the end of the swimming pool, there was a gazebo arch, and there I stood with a couple. Uh, they smiled, they exchanged, exchanged vows of love and fidelity, all the rest of it. I read from the scriptures, I, I prayed with them. This looked a very, very nice, moving experience until something happened, which left everyone in complete shock. As the couple, were walking to the house by the side of the swimming pool, the husband, for some unknown reason, decided to push his wife into the pool. Um, obviously, this was not part of the script. The sons were absolutely furious. <clears throat> the wife, with this wonderful hairdo, which had completely melted, and a beautiful dress, and she bobbed up from, <laughs> from the pool. In one way, it was funny. In another way, no one laughed. And in a split second, the husband realized, I think I've done the wrong thing. <laughs> and we gasped. There was a poor woman, tried to get to the side, uh, getting out of the pool with all dignity. It was very, very difficult. And as we went into the house, there was an awkward silence. You say, well, that's extreme. I've known men to do extreme things. Don't do that. That may be funny. Later, it's not funny. Be sensitive, be considerate. Peter's going to say she's a woman. That may be something you do with your friends. That's not something you do with your wives, men. No, a wife needs a husband to love her, to be tender to her. Harshness, meanness, anger, bitterness have no part in the Christian home. Be kind, be tender, be considerate and understanding. And mothers who are at home with young children need additional sensitivity and care. Now, notice what Peter says. Likewise, men, live with your wives in an understanding way. We've seen that. Showing her honor as the weaker vessel. Peter reminds husbands that their wives are the weaker vessel. Generally speaking, men are physically stronger than their wives. I've never arm wrestled with my wife, but I think I would win, I certainly hope so. 
we are generally physically stronger, bigger uh, than our wives. Our wives are generally speaking, and I'm being general here, are more sensitive, are more easily hurt than their husbands. In my office upstairs, I have uh, several boxes of Kleenex. Few over the years have been used by men. Many have been used by women. Peter is saying this. Remember, she's the weaker vessel. Be gentle with your wife. She's a wife. Don't abuse your wife. Certainly don't physically assault your wife. Don't abuse your wife verbally or sexually or emotionally. There are many angry men. Anger has no part in the Christian home. And some of you are very angry because of what's happened to you in the past and that anger. Don't bring out that anger on your wife and your family. That is disastrous. Scripture tells us generally to be kind, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ has forgiven you. That's true of us generally, but certainly in the home. Men, we recognize our wives are the weaker vessel, so tenderness and care is needed. And a smart man, a Christian man, tries to understand his wife's personality, feelings, fears, needs, hurts, frustrations, ambitions, temperament, thought patterns. Is that easy for us? No, it wasn't easy for me. I was brought up in a male-dominated home with five brothers. I think I understand men, I understand boys. Trying to understand my young wife was not easy for me. To begin with, I thought I was very uh, surprised when she didn't laugh at my brilliant jokes. Our humor uh, was very different. How we related was very different. And I thought, you know, what is this? This is not how my brothers would respond in a situation. And I had to learn, as we all have to learn men, that a woman is different. Some of you had sisters. Maybe it was easier for you. I don't know. But we have to try to understand our wife, her hurts, her ambitions, what she's actually thinking. That takes time. That takes conversation. I wonder, husbands, how well you know your wife. We don't know, get to know one another until we reveal ourselves. If I don't know you, we speak. And in order to have a connection, we reveal something about ourselves. Husbands, Take time. Ask the right questions. Your wife begins to go in a certain, certain direction that you don't like, and you can sense some criticism is going to come. Don't cut her off. Listen to her. You may not agree with her, but listen to her. Treat her tenderly, lovingly, and respectfully. Peter says, as the weaker vessel, she's a woman. And single men, when you date, a Christian woman, you're not going to date an unbeliever. Remember, man, she's a woman. Treat her with sensitivity, with tenderness, and with care. Now, although Peter is saying the woman is a weaker vessel, this does not mean that women do not have strength of character. We all know very strong women. My mother was one, five feet two, small. My mother was one of the strongest people I know. Not physically, obviously. In another generation, I think she could have been successful in any profession she chose. But her skills, her endurance, her self-sacrificial nature in that culture, in that generation, were used by God to rear six boys. Even when my father died suddenly, my mother was 49, just before her 50th birthday, and my two youngest brothers were 11 and 15. I had a brother who was handicapped through having brain surgery. So there was my mother left. I was out of the home. My other brothers were out of the home. We were married. But there was my mother left with two young boys to bring up and another son who needed special care. Now, that takes more skill than my job. And we respect such women, don't we? We hold them in high regard. Yes, they may be weaker physically, but they're strong in the Lord, 
a strength of character, an endurance that they are submitting to the purposes of God. Now, Peter gives another injunction to ensure that Christian men, we don't patronize or demean our wives. What does he say again? Live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel, since they are heirs with you of the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered. Isn't this very interesting? We are to treat our wives with sensitivity, but we're also to treat our wives with honor. We're to honor our wives. We're equally made in the image of God. Both of us are fallen. Both of us need redemption in Jesus Christ. Both of us need forgiveness and repentance. We're both gifted. God gifts men and gifts women. We're equal, but we're different. And so he says here, remember, since they are heirs with you, co-heirs of the grace of life. Goody and I are co-heirs of the grace of life. You and your wife, if you're both Christians, are co-heirs of the grace of life, sharing the inherit inheritance of the grace of life. In other words, that's the most important thing about us. Yes, we have different interests, similar interests, but we are heirs of the grace of life. We have a common destiny. We've both been saved. Christ is at work in our lives. And we look forward, as we sang, of that great day when Christ will come. And the Christian husband then will submit his own interests, his preferences, for the good of his wife and children. Do you feel that you're treating your wife with honor? We brought up the wives here, and all of them could tell the truth. <laughs> what would they say? I don't expect them to say you're perfect. Of course not. Well, could they say my husband, in his adages, in his actions, in his speech, honors me? I've met many wives who felt worthless. They felt put down. They may not have been physically assaulted, but they have been verbally assaulted. There are men who try to control their wives. That is not honoring them. They treat them like a bird in a cage. They may tightly control all of the finances. I remember this man who was very upset. His fiancée, in fact, hadn't even married, and, and uh, we were talking about finances, and he said, she's got no regard for money. She had the money as well, he didn't. In my opinion, she was hardworking. He didn't like work too much. And he got very upset because she had gone to Starbucks and bought coffee. He said, this is poor stewardship. She could stay at home and, and make a cup of coffee for 50 cents. I said, are you kidding? You're going to object to your wife going out with some of her friends and having a cup of coffee? I mean, what control? How does that demean your wife? No, we treat them with honor. Yes, there is financial um, prudence. Of course there is. But men, don't put down your wives. Don't treat them as inferior. They're not your slave. They're not your servant. They are co-heirs with you of the grace of life. Encourage them. Our goal is, as husbands, to help our wives fulfill all of the purposes of God in their life. So do you listen to your wife? Do you know what goes on? Would some of her friends know her better than you? Do you try to understand her? Do you, do you show affection to her? Are you cold towards your wife? Over the years, there's been a distancing. That's not honoring her. Do you admit it when you're wrong? That's tough for us, isn't it? It's tough for me because I'm very seldom wrong. <laughs> I understand, this is difficult. For this, we need the filling of the Spirit of God. We need help, we need spiritual help. 
but your wife is an heir with you of the grace of life. Christian men, all men, certainly Christian men, should be characterized by courtesy, by good manners and respect for women. Remember Paul in the epistles, the pastoral epistles, he reminds Timothy that you treat the older women as mothers, and you treat the younger women as sisters. I don't have a sister, but if I did, men, I would expect you to treat my sister with respect. My mother is with the Lord, but if my mother were alive and came to Calvary Church, as she interacted with you men, I would expect you to treat my mother with respect and love. Isn't that true of us? Good manners. We live in a crass society, don't we? Where language is becoming very vulgar. Where speak, people speak in very harsh, vulgar, even blasphemous way. That should have no part of the language of a Christian and certainly should not be part of the home. If that's part of your home, your children are going to speak like that. No. We should never do anything that would dishonor her wife. In her speech, in her conduct, in the bedroom, our wives should always respect us. That's what Paul says in Ephesians 5.33. Men, husbands, love your wife. Wives, see to it that you respect your husband. We should never, ever ask our wife to do something that would cause her to disrespect us. Our wives should be in no doubt that we love them, that we respect them, that we care for them, that we protect them, that we provide for them, and that we hold them in the highest of esteem. And here's the wonderful thing. As you do that in the fear of the Lord, looking to the Lord for help, the Christian husband, husband's treatment of his wife greatly impacts his spiritual life in particularly greatly impacts their prayer life. So that, notice the last part of verse 7, so that your prayers may not be hindered. You ever wonder why God isn't answering your prayers? One reason may be, men, because you're not treating your wife with honor. You're not treating her with, in an understanding way. How we treat our wives has a direct bearing on our prayer life. Our communion with God is adversely impacted if we don't follow the teaching of 1 Peter 3, verse 7. If you're not honoring, honoring your wife, if you're not treating her with sensitivity, your prayer life is going to be hindered. Bitterness in a husband-wife relationship then adversely impacts our spiritual life. God views very seriously then how we as husbands relate to our wives. Your relationship with your wife impacts your relationship with the Lord. The closer you are to the Lord, the closer spiritually you're going to be with your wife. The further away you are from the Lord, the further away you're going to be from your wife. So we're to protect them. We're to grant them honor. Protecting your wife's reputation. Defending them if necessary. Certainly being courteous. Holding them in high esteem. Loving them as Christ loved the church. How do we summarize the message today? It's this. Peter is saying to husbands who are followers of Christ, treat your wife with sensitivity and honor. You know it's true. All of us here are going to agree with that. What about the practice? Think this way, man. Not in a silly way, not going over the top, but in an authentic way. You know your wife. In what way can you as a husband honor your wife? When we obey God in marriage, there are wonderful rewards. Peter says that the Christian wife may have the joy of seeing her unbelieving husband come to Christ. The Christian wife who is characterized by the imperishable, the hidden, the imperishable attitude of a quiet spirit has the reward of being precious in the sight of God. The Christian wife who hopes in God, who is submissive to her husband, does what is right, will have a godly confidence, will not walk in fear, will be strong in the Lord, 
secure in her relationship with God and with her husband, and will be a woman then who impacts not only her home, but those around her. The Christian husband who treats his wife with sensitivity and honor will have the joy of having a vibrant prayer life and a strong walk with the Lord. Obey God in your marriage. And for all of this, we need divine help. I'm going to ask God for His help here at Calvary, that we would have Christ-centered homes and marriages and relationship. Husbands, wives, could you stand? I want to pray for all of the husbands and wives. Could you, could you come up here so I can hold your hand? Maybe it's a while since you held the hand of your, your wife. Put your arm around her. And think not of the marriage of others, but of your marriage. And look around and see the many, many marriages and homes here at Calvary. We need God's help, don't we? We need Christ-centered home. We need to make that commitment to our wives. Our Father and our God, I thank You for the husbands, for the wives standing here. I praise You for the strong marriages, the marriages that honor You. May they grow and grow. I pray for the men in particular, that they will love their wives as Christ loved the church. I pray that they will live with their wives with understanding, that they will honor them. I pray that they will repent of any bitterness, of selfishness, of, of uh, sin, of abuse, of any way that they've hurt their wife and have gone against your word. Give them humility. May they turn from that and that you will fill their hearts with love, and that love will overflow to their wives and to their children. We realize that we have an enemy who seeks to divide us, who attacks us in so many ways, and particularly in our marriages. So we pray that we will not give him an opportunity, but that you will strengthen these men, that you will give them wisdom, that they will be wise and godly leaders, making an impact not only in their homes, but in their society. And I pray this in Christ's name. Amen.